It is January 5th, 2023, and I am Mike Harris, Goals Director of Public Policy, and uh, this is the Legislative Update Series. I'm uh, coming to you today from my desk while I work on getting our legislation in order uh, to try and keep goals members, and to the extent that we can, the larger population of Massachusetts gun owners up to date on what is going on in our state government. Uh, first, though, I do want to say thank you to our members. Uh, without you, we would be absolutely nowhere. And uh, this coming legislative session, we are going to need your support more than ever uh, with the current makeup of our government. Um, second, though, I would like to take, to take a moment to thank everyone who helped out with, sold tickets to, or bought tickets for our 2022 Lucky 20 raffle, and also to congratulate our winners. It's a pretty cool one. Uh, it was fun to see everybody uh, come in and uh, pick up their stuff. Uh, I'd also be remiss if I didn't specifically thank the raffle sponsors, which uh, helped us out a ton. Uh, they donated guns and time and all kinds of stuff. And it's uh, Powderhorn Outfitters in Hyannis, uh, New Tech R&D at The Mill in Littleton, uh, Mossberg, Sig Sauer, Cam4 Distributors, uh, Cape Gunworks, and of course Hornady, who came in at the last minute and donated a uh, whole bunch of uh, safes and safety devices for us. So that's kind of cool. So thank you to them. We, uh, it wouldn't have been a success without you. Um, well, let's get down to it. Uh, yesterday, January 4th, the 193rd session of the Massachusetts, Massachusetts General Court, or the legislature, was convened. Uh, this means that new members of the House and Senate were sworn in, and the process to choose the leadership of the chambers began as well. Uh, House Speaker Ron Mariano and Senate President Karen Spilka will continue their roles as the leaders of their respective chambers and as the leaders of the Democratic majorities. Uh, the House Republicans will continue to be led by Representative Brad Jones, and the Senate Republicans will be led by Senator Bruce Tarr. Um, there are 200 members of the general court in total. Uh, there are 160 House members and 40 senators. Uh, and in the House, there are currently 132 Democrats, 25 Republicans, uh, one independent, and two vacant seats, um, kind of an odd one. Uh, in the Senate, there are 37 Democrats and three Republicans, yikes on both counts. It's, you know, anytime you get something that lopsided, it's a little rough. Um, and as you know, the Democrats have an absolute hold on uh, legislative power in the Commonwealth and have held on to their supermajorities for decades. And it looks like that's kind of gonna be the story for the foreseeable future, unless something big changes, you never know what'll happen, but you know, uh, that's kind of the story. Um, as you also likely know, since gun owners tend to keep up with the news and political matters, uh, the governor's of office is also changing hands. Uh, yesterday, Governor Baker took the long walk down the front staircase at the State House, um, and today, uh, which signifies his leaving office. Uh, it's only open for a couple of different events, and that's one of them. Uh, today, Attorney General Mara Healy was sworn in as the new governor and Mayor Kim Driscoll was sworn in as the new Lieutenant Governor, so I guess you can call him Governor and Lieutenant Governor instead of uh, AG and Mayor. Uh, the other constitutional officers were sworn in as well. Uh, Andrea Campbell is the new Attorney General. Uh, William Galvin was sworn in uh, for, oh man, I forget what term he's on, but it's a long time, uh, but he was sworn in as the Secretary of the Commonwealth. Uh, Diana Zoglio is our new State Auditor. She's, uh, she's pretty cool, I like her. Uh, and uh, Deborah Goldberg will be sworn in again as the state treasurer. She was also the incumbent. Uh, this means that all three branches of the state government, um, and including most all of the constitutional offices and most of the other statewide areas, will be controlled by the Democratic Party. And as you know, uh, not traditionally friendly to our cause, but it is what it is. Uh, we're not without hope. Uh, the Bruin decision has thankfully put the wind at our backs for the first time in a long time. And there is some progress to be made, we think. Uh, we have a handful of good friends in the legislature on both sides of the aisle that have helped, that have pledged to help us preserve our Second Amendment civil rights. And with hard work, we are pretty confident that we can have a positive impact in a situation that may seem hopeless to some. We're, we're always going to do our best. Um, but uh, moving forward, uh, goal staff is uh, we're going to be meeting with the new AG's transition team to discuss our priorities and concerns that we have with her plans for the, con the Commonwealth's gun laws, uh, which signifies a, you know, a willingness to, to have a conversation, which is great. They reached out to us. Uh, we also plan to, fi and will be, filing 24 pieces of legislation on topics ranging from drug and firearm trafficking issues, 
on hunting matters to changes in the Commonwealth's licensing process, uh, fundamentally. Uh, we're hoping to get that stuff done. Uh, but we have working drafts of all of those bills, and we are currently working on lining up uh, legislative sponsors for them. So that'll be kind of cool on both sides of the aisle. It's kind of nice. Uh, we will also be monitoring any and all bills that the legislators file regarding firearms independent of us. Uh, and we're working hard to make sure that even if they disagree with us on core issues, that they're at least well informed about any potential decision they might be making or vote they might be taking. Uh, you know, we just want to make sure that they know uh, what they're talking about. Um, all right, so that concludes the first legislative update of the year. Uh, thank you for sticking around and for coming back to tune in. Uh, once we have all of our bills filed and rolling through the legislative process, we're going to have the full list up on Goal's website on the legislation chart. Uh, I'll also be back filming these videos periodically on a more regular basis to keep you up to date on what is happening in the Commonwealth. Um, and we will also be coming back to our members periodically for help advocating for or against legislation. Uh, so keep an eye out for our calls to action throughout the year. Uh, we're also going to be utilizing our new um, text messaging service. So take a look at the Goal website. Um, there's a ton of information on there. And as always, I'll make sure to include a link to the website and our interactive how to find your legislator map since they might have changed uh, this last week. Uh, please call, write, or otherwise reach out to your legislators if you care about your civil rights and let them know how you feel. Uh, they really do listen. And who knows, maybe you can change your mind or two or at least help them make an informed decision on a topic they might not be so well informed about. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and we will see you soon. Uh, and as always, remember, self-defense is a human right.